Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Now I've got a video on a chair called the Lightly, and the Lightly is made by a company in New Zealand called Noho, and designed by a sister company called Formway Design. So this is the first time I've been able to share a commercial project uh, on YouTube, so quite exciting. Uh, it's great that Formway have allowed me to to share this. So I'm going to I'm just going to go over a bit of background and then look at a bit of a, some of the technical constraints on the model and maybe a little bit of how I approach some of the modelling challenges. Formway Design, I've uh, been working for them since 2008, I believe. So this is uh, I've worked on several chairs with with them. I worked on the null regeneration, generation, multi-generation, uh, remix, remix side. Then I've worked on the Natutsi Revive, which is a recliner, and also on another chair that Noho makes, which was the first one they launched called the Move. This chair, I believe, is called Lightly because they were going for the minimal quantity of polymer needed to hit a few requirements, like the aesthetic requirements, the uh, the seating performance and also the Bithma standards. So I'm just going to skip over to their website and have a look at some photos. Okay, so we're over on noho.co. So as I said, New Zealand based company, so it's been moulded in New Zealand and then exported. Comes in five colours, uh, pretty minimal design. Uh, and as I said, it's, it meets various standards. My involvement with this chair started once Formway had got the design to a point, say a feasibility model, and uh, they'd developed the aesthetic and the, they'd done quite a lot of uh, extensive FEA testing. So they got me involved to help develop the final model tooling. So this model here uh, is from 2018. Uh, the final, final model has a few alterations and then there were some tooling mods. So, but this captures the general uh, design intent of the chair. First thing I'm going to talk about the frame of the chair, which is the largest part, so I'll just open that in another window. Okay, as you see here, the frame, uh, the surface spaces are coloured in different colours, so that is to identify which faces are uh, moulded by which face in the tooling. So obviously something like this, moulding is one part, uh, not the simplest thing to do, so if I go over here and looking for my MLOD, so main line of draw plane. You can see here, I'm looking in at the chair, so the tool splits uh, this way and this way. So the chair is rotated over an angle, maybe 45 degrees-ish. And then, so all these white faces here, or the gray faces, they're picked up on one side of the tool. And all the red faces here are picked up on the other side. I'm not sure which is core and which is cavity. And then, You'll notice also there's pink and green faces. So there are four actions, uh, main actions in the tool that pick up these pink faces. So if I click on action line of draw, we're looking in normal. So all this, uh, all the pink faces here get picked up by this action. And then equally, if I split the, uh, if I just section the model down the middle, uh, if we turn it 180 degrees, there's the opposing action in the middle, which collapses towards the middle. That picks up the green faces okay and then that's repeated on the other side and then there are little bitty actions to pick up the uh, recesses in the in the ends of the legs for the uh, for the glides so quite a bit going on and also quite a bit uh, like I think the draft was three degrees was it two two or three degrees trying to hit that draft target everywhere um, and you can see here part lines that have to transition from the front to the back of the sections. And other tricky things as well, like over here, obviously there's a part line here between where the two actions are shut off. And then uh, we've had to put a, a crease up here because we've got, say, six degree crease here and we want that to taper out to nothing on that uh, section of the leg. As you can see there. So that little crease, just little things like that, otherwise we'd end up with a step uh, in a highly visible area, which isn't ideal. And looking at the model, there's some challenges here, from a moulding point of view especially. This, uh, the back's three millimetres thick, I think. Yeah, so you've got thin sections like that. And then through here, I'll just run a section. Through 
through the legs. You have these rather heavy sections. And these are all, uh, this is molded with a gas assist. So uh, once, I believe the process is, once the uh, plastic's injected in the mold, uh, there's a high pressure bubble that's run in for a few select points. And that evacuates some of the plastic and stops sinking and means we don't have to core out all these legs, which would be uh, not aesthetically great. Quite often people say it's best to put radiuses on last. Well, in this case, I couldn't do that because I had to I had to know where the radiuses were to split them halfway along. We had a, a face where we had to split for the tooling. So uh, quite a lot of chicken and egg stuff in this, in this um, part, like what do you build first, you know? And then some areas which are resultant, like if this is three degrees on either side here, this uh, surface is resultant as far as the draft angle across here, because it has to hit these uh, minimum draft angles over here. Might just skip through the featured tree quickly. It's quite a heavy model. Uh, we go evaluate and go performance evaluation. So just under 1300 features in this. Uh, in the actual final, final version, there's more. So I'm going to roll back through the model uh, in just each section. So here's back construction, um, back leg construction. I'll just I'll just briefly explain what was going on in that area and and roughly thought process. Okay, so to start with, there's some imports like the feasibility model, and then we'll set up the main lines of draw as you can see, and the action angles. So these are the construction to drive the action angles okay and then the action line of draw plane and next back construction so that is the main form for the backrest so we've got three three millimeters uh thickness through the middle there and you can see it's got variable thickness it's a bit hard to see but it, it, it jumps from three to 4.25 Okay, so variable thickness. Next up, back leg construction. Okay, the back leg has, as you can see, I've modelled uh, split lines, and then I'll put the blends on later. And so I've got the main forms, crown surfaces, and one thing I used a lot of was ruled surfaces. All the drafts controlled with ruled surfaces, quite a handy feature. Okay, next up, front leg construction. Okay, front leg's much simpler than the rear leg. So you can see the split line there, and I've already put the blend in, rather than trying to put this in later near the bottom of the tree, because lots of other things rely on where the split line, where this blend is. Okay, next up is the front cross member. Okay, so Got to integrate this this section into this section so there's this flare running through here and also you can see the split line here runs from front to back so with the draft analysis using the main line of draw you can see where the split line runs so that was all explicitly defined in the model okay and then we've got the side tie bar construction So that's just the straight bar, and then we'll go do the blends on each end. So quite a lot of features gone into the blend on the end there. There's a lot going on. Uh, we've got to control these split lines and these surfaces. And split lines running from different faces, bottom face to rear face. A lot going on. The rear tie bar junction. So again, lots of features. Like so. Then the rear, what does that say? Rear leg top blend construction. So the leg blends into the frame for the seat, where the rear leg blends into the backrest. And again, some draft stuff going on. Like coming around, there's the split line, then it has to deviate off and then run down the back edge. Okay, under seat structure, which supports the seat pan. Like that, so quite a lot going on there. That uses the surface that uh, references the surface out of the seat master. 
notice the model is now solidified. And then the recesses for the glides and some drafts and fillets and a mirror and combine and elite bodies to clean up the file. Like so. So this is the seat pan master, the seat master uh, without the underside features. So this drives the actual seat pan seat shell file and it also drives the top of the support structure on the uh, frame. So I'm just going to skip through this pretty quickly and just sort of explain what's going on. So there's some plan view, uh, perimeters, controls, and then the waterfall edge, so where the main concavity uh, sort of stops. Then those are constructed into projected curves. They are uh, intersected with our main, that's our center line there. And then start creating sections to build up this outside surface. And then there's a boundary surface built in the back section. Another boundary surface to build this front section. And then start building sections across here to, to build the, uh, the main concave area on the seat. So quite a lot of control here so we could tweak things like, you know, people get feedback uh, from SIP testing. So issue controls through here. And then that gets built into the surface, like so. So that's a loft because we've got lots of sections. And then done some of the, uh, made that loft, uh, trimmed an area out to make it a four-sided four surface. If you watched any of my other videos, you would have seen this kind of thing happening before. So I'll just roll back and show you that again. So there's the loft. And then it gets trimmed like that and to make a four-sided surface on the back there. And see the same happens on the front here. So that gets trimmed back. To make a four sided surface. Like so. Right, so that's the seat pan pretty much. And now oh, there's various things going on to create thicknesses um, and the draft around the outside edge. I won't go into that though. Yeah, so there you go. Right, so I think I'll wrap this up now. Um, as I said, this is my first commercial project. And I've been able to share on YouTube and it's the uh, Lightly Chair by Noho, designed by Formay Design and manufactured in New Zealand. So uh, thanks for watching, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye.